The Apostle Paul gives four charges to his son Timothy, and one of them is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, where he says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. And this follows that wonderful description at the end of chapter 3, where he explains that the word of God is sufficient to completely equip the man of God for every good work. And so, of course, if it's so essential for our development, we need to proclaim the word of God. But he goes on to say, be ready in season and out of season. And I'd like to tell a little story that illustrates this idea. Many years ago, I had been invited for three weeks of Bible teaching and gospel preaching in the state of Colorado. It was to begin just after a Labor Day weekend, and I was preparing for that when all of a sudden I received a phone call from a friend in North Carolina who said, we have a youth conference this weekend and a lot of young people planning to come and our speaker has just called and canceled. Is there any way you could come? And I said, well, brother, uh, I'm supposed to be going to Colorado. And he said, could you call them and see if you could adjust their meetings by a few days and still come to North Carolina? I said, well, I'll call. I don't want to put them in an awkward situation, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. And so I called my friend there in Grand Junction, Colorado, and told him the story. And I said, look, I don't want to change if it would be awkward for you. And he said, well, we have invited a lot of people uh, that are not part of our local fellowship. And just then the phone line was cut. And it took us a minute or two to get reconnected. And when we did, he said, look, uh, I've had a minute or two to think about this. And this probably is the only opportunity we'll get a, a chance to invest in the young people in North Carolina. So you go ahead and we'll rearrange things here. And I thought that was very gracious. And so I called my friend back and said, of course, I'm going to have to get a flight. It's Labor Day weekend, tough to get. But um, I started to call the airlines and plane after plane was full, full, full until finally at the end she said, there is one last flight. Oh, sir, you're in luck. There's one seat left. And I said, well, not exactly luck, ma'am. I happen to know the air traffic controller. She said, you do? I said, yes, it's the Lord and he has that seat for me. So I was very busy up all night preparing, getting things ready because I was leaving at five in the morning. I got a taxi to drive me to the Buffalo Airport. I lived in Ontario at the time. When I went out to get in the car, I was exhausted and I just wanted to sleep for the hour to the airport. But the Lord had other ideas. As soon as we got in the car and headed down the road, he asked me where I was headed. I told him I was going to North Carolina, and he said, what are you going to do there? Well, normally if I say I'm a teacher, I get a little bit of leeway. But if I say I'm a preacher, people usually shut down and start finding the road markings very interesting, something that they have to pay attention to. In this occasion, when I said that I was a teacher, he said, what do you teach? I said, I teach the Bible. And after a little bit, he, he said, you, you seem pretty young to be doing this. I was, I think, maybe in my late 20s then. And I said, well, how old are you? And he said, well, I'm 50. And I confess I was quite lighthearted when I said to him, so tell me, does life begin at 40? And very sadly, he said to me, well, it hasn't begun for me yet. Does your Bible have the answer? I had prayed and asked that God would give me an opportunity when I got on the plane. I wasn't thinking about the taxi driver. And so as we headed out to the highway, I shared with him some scripture verses that told him the way of salvation. We pulled out onto the highway and he pulled the car off to the side of the road. And he put his head on the steering wheel and he began to pray. I'll never forget his prayer. He said, Lord, you knew I needed this, didn't you? You arranged this. And I want what this man is saying, I want this to be true of me. I want to put my trust in Jesus and I want him to save me. Well, you know, I wasn't finished. I had some other verses I wanted to quote to him first. But he was so eager to get saved. 
And the moment he put his trust in the Lord, you could see the change. The burden lifted. He was a happy man. He could hardly contain himself as we drove down the highway. Well, we pulled into the city of Niagara Falls and went to one of the hotels there. And there were two men who were executives with a company, and they were supposed to be flying on a corporate jet. But uh, some higher-ups in the company had bumped them, and they were going to have to fly commercial, and they were very unhappy about it. They threw their bags in the back of the vehicle and climbed in the back seat, and they were grousing and complaining. And as we pulled out of the parking lot, the taxi driver turned to them and said, Are you fellows religious? <laughs> you could feel the icicles coming across from the back seat. They said, No, not at all. No, we're not. And he said, well, you know, this fellow here is pointing to me in the front seat. He's not, he says he's not very religious either, but uh, he, he really knows the Bible. He said, tell us some more of the Bible. Well, I turned to these men and I said, you know, you're probably not very interested in what I have to say about the Bible, are you? And they said, no, we're not. And I said, well, I wasn't supposed to be in this car today. I was supposed to be leaving tomorrow for Colorado instead of today for North Carolina, and it all changed in the middle of the night. And I understand you weren't supposed to be in this car today either. Is that right? And they said, no. I said, you don't suppose God rearranged things so we could meet? I said, you know, you may not be very interested in what I have to say right now, but there may be some day that you'll be desperate to know this. You may drop with a heart attack on the floor, and all of a sudden you realize you're going to meet God and you're not ready. So I'd listen very carefully to the gospel if I were you. And so I began to explain the gospel to them. I didn't even get a grunt from the back seat. Now the driver was so excited everything I said he would slap the steering wheel and say isn't that great fellas? Isn't that great? He was so excited about the gospel. When I got to the airport we got out of the vehicle those men didn't even give me a glance as they got up and stormed into the airport. Now these are two examples. Preach the word, be ready, in season and out of season. You know, when you farm out of season, you don't expect much of a crop. But says the Apostle Paul, you have no idea what God is doing. And what may appear to be out of season is actually in season. Someone may be right for the gospel. And so we need to realize the power of the word of God to accomplish what we can't accomplish. But somebody who may seem to be very disinterested may be desperate within a few days of knowing what the gospel really is. So I encourage you, as Paul encouraged Timothy, in our hands we hold the very word of life, the power of God, the sword of the Spirit. And so he says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. And when we get to heaven, we'll find out what God has done with his wonderful word. <music>